Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back into the studio. This week's video is going to be an excerpt from one of my Patreon videos. If you want to support the channel and watch the full video, which is over an hour long, head over to patreon.com forward slash idkarnst. You'll find a link in the description below. Enjoy. So drawing first, then clay to support the drawing. This is the name of the game. I like to draw and leave the drawn line there while I step back. I check my drawn line from a distance. The drawn line provides context and I make adjustment based on the drawn line if I need to. I have to walk up to the sculpture to draw so I can't properly be sure if the drawing was correct or not when I place it. I have to step back in order to, to ask that question. This question, as every question is, it's asked and answered from a distance. And once I confirm the drawing, I support the drawing with a little bit of clay. The technique used for measuring here, the technique that I use, is called comparative measurement. Since we are working in one-to-one -one scale, I suppose it might be natural perhaps for some of you to believe that we can simply transfer a measurement taken from a distance to our sculpture. However, I don't think this is the case. We're not working side size here. I prefer to have my sculpture slightly in front of the model. This way the two can be closer together and the distance my eye has to travel becomes much shorter. But because of this, because the sculpture is closer to me than the model, the sculpture is going to appear larger, which has the potential to mess the scale up a little bit. The way that I deal with this is by having that one measurement at the beginning measuring chin to brow and maintaining this height relationship. Everything else working within this height relationship keeps everything to scale. Everything now just needs to fit properly in relationship to this measurement. Back to comparative measurements. It works more or less like this. I measure two things on my model and I see how they compare to each other. For example, the length of the nose from tip of the nose to the brow ridge compared to the length of the mouth and the chin section. They seem to be close to the same length. Now I need to make sure that these two sections have a similar relationship on my work. And if they do, I should be pretty good. Even if my piece ends up being slightly out of scale, slightly too large or slightly too small, it's not going to be a problem as long as it's not too much, and as long as the relationships within my sculpture works the same way they do on my model. Regarding the placement of the features in relationship to each other, here are a few strategies I use while placing them. First and foremost, they must relate well to the profile and to each other. In order to accomplish this, I check a few angles. As you can see, the nostrils sit further forward than the back corner of the mouth. This is typical, but it's not always the case, so you have to, to double check this. There's also this stepladder effect that happens in regards to the placement of the features, as you can see in this image. The brow sits further out than the upper lid which sits further out than the lower lip. The upper lip sits further out than the lower lip, which usually sits further out than the chin. It's not always this easy, it's not always this way, but often enough, things tend to work out more or less like this, if the pose is neutral. Another thing to note while we're at it is the difference in depth between the section below the nose and the brow ridge. 
There's quite a lot of difference in depth here. A lot more than you would think, and if not set up properly from the beginning, this depth tends to be missed by many, many beginning students. We tend to talk to each other face to face, right? We rarely talk to each other's profiles. And because of this, I think we have a poor understanding of the depth that exists on the portrait. Because remember, from the front view, we can't properly perceive depth. Beginning from the profile forces us to deal with this and set up these depths early on in the process. And it keeps the face from appearing very flat. It's a mistake I've seen again and again. Beginners will often disregard the depth between the mouth and the brow and the result ends up being a tremendous struggle to get the planes of the face to function as they do on the model. Planes is a big conversation, but one I think is better suited to the next video perhaps, where our decisions made today will begin to slowly transform into planes. Though I'll cover it a little bit here. So while planes are not much of a concern yet, one thing I am doing a lot of is separating light planes from shadow planes. We've already talked a little bit about this. This is not an accurate science, by the way, in the least. I simply look at my model. I take stock of where we have planes facing downwards. These are shadow planes. Planes facing upwards are light planes. This distinction gives me yet another thing that serves as context and brings my sculpture a little closer to looking like my model. Achieving this light and shadow effect does of course mean that I have to add a little bit of width, but it's not going to be a lot and it's not going to cost me any trouble. Think of it as creating a, a, a rough relief or, or something like that. In this image, we have some of the planes that face the light. There are more, of course, but these are some of the obvious ones. And here are some examples of planes facing away from the light, shadow planes. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, consider liking it and subscribing to the channel for more videos. I put out a new video every Thursday, so stay tuned for next week. If you want to support the channel, Watch the full one hour video, which this is an excerpt from, fill to the brim with instruction and in detail descriptions of what is going on. Visit the link to my Patreon page in the description below of the video to learn how. Until then, stay creative and I hope to see you in the next one.